Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this in the morning. Fifteen minutes to change our lives. Basically, we're going to discuss something very interesting. Now we're just going to go straight into a lesson in Hiran of Hashem. We're going to discuss how Yehuda had the guts, maybe you know, maybe a little crazy, to speak to Yosef and the results. Let's see. Okay, Allah Basak on the Basak. Vegash love Yehuda. And Yehuda approached him. Tamra Zaldra, I say, comes in the Medrash. Um Sha Shabigisha Zuli Yesef Ha Yehud Muchana Kul Gamal Muhammad. But we say that uh, when Yehuda approaches Yosef, Yosef has one of his brothers, you know, and Yehuda's like and in, in jail and and so Yehuda's coming and saying, hey, listen, we need to take the kid home. Well, we can't, uh, this is not happening. So it says Yehuda, when he approaches Yehuda, Yehuda is the most powerful man in Mitzrayim, basically, on the pari. And Yehuda says, and Yehuda, it's the, it's the measure says that Yehuda was ready to do everything, even to wage war. Now we're going to discuss, what does it mean? What was he thinking and how is that even possible? And what, the, what does that lesson mean for us? Why do you put himself in such a dangerous situation? The Mam Shah Kasu, the apostle continues, says, Why? He says, he says to Yehuda, he says to Yosef, because I am I am the guarantor of my son, my brother. For the child, the now. <laughs> so basically, what happened was yeah, um, Yaakov didn't want to send any more kids. Basically, they said, we can only go back at food. The brothers came back to their father, Yaakov, and said, we can only come back to Mitzrayim if we bring our youngest son and Yehuda's brother. I mean, uh, Yehuda's brother. And Yaakov doesn't want to do it. It's a bad idea. And so Yehuda says, I'll take a Christ for this. Sends off. They don't have a choice, and they send him. <clears throat> so now... Now they come into this situation and there's a problem here. So why did Yehuda put himself in such a situation? Because he's in charge. Because ultimately, Yosef, then the, the, uh, basically the kid's in jail. And so Yosef, and so Yehuda come to Yosef and say, hey, this kid has to come out. We can't do this. We're not, having, we're not doing it this way. And that's why he was ready to, ready to even to the extent of waging war. Now, Yehuda, how is he going to wage war with Yosef exactly? Yehuda and his brothers are a very small amount of people. Yosef is the ruler of all of Egypt. Yosef has control of all of Egypt. Yehuda and a few of his brothers, they don't stand a chance against Yosef. So what is Yehuda coming to say? I'm, I'm ready to wage war. I'll do whatever it takes. I can go fight you. I'm saying, where's the logic? You're not going to win this war. You have no chance. What's the point? Now, now you could say, what do you mean? But Jehuda was a very strong guy. We know, like it says, um, but even, even though Yehuda was very strong, Yosef and his sons are even stronger, like it says in the Medjush. Because Yehuda, Raka, Raglav, Yehuda, he banged his foot and the whole Mitzrayim shook. Gila Gam Yosef Gvura, because Yosef also revealed his strength. And Shama Yehuda, Zegiba meant Yehuda said, This guy is stronger than me. Zeh Zeh Epa, Haya Muchan Lachem Legdom. So now, even according to the Medrash, that we see how Yehuda was very strong, but Yosef was even stronger than Yehuda. And Yehuda admits this. So Ibn Kalzas, if so, why is Yehuda willing to wage war with Yosef? It's, it's a victory. He's not gonna, it's, it's, there's no victory. He's sure not going to win. What's the point? Ah, so what's the reason why Yehuda did this? Because in front of Yaakov, he said, He said, I'll take care of, of Binyamin. That's what Yehuda said to Yaakov. And he's, now he's in charge. He has to take care of Binyamin. The fact that he took upon himself to do this, that's enough. Now you could say, what do you mean? But what's the, what, it's not worth it. You're going to die in the process. Let, 
we have so many good brothers, we're all good, so one guy will lose. Whatever, it's not the worst thing. Mispa called Echem in his soul. Um, say, yeah, after the gap with Gala, but yeah, Array, the Mersh, Shire, Hot, and Shire, Mahim, Slame, and Mispa Nafshes, Abu yelled Echem in his soul, Mishum, Shinata, Al Atma, Hyas. But because it's one Yid, it's one Jewish child, we're willing to give up everything. That's the story. This is the, the context of the story. Now they're going to discuss what it does mean for us. So just to clarify the story again, that uh, Yehuda comes, he starts to speak to Yosef, and it says in the Medrash, it says in Razal that Yehuda is willing to do whatever it takes, even to wage war. Now, the question is, why would Yehuda try to wage war with Yosef? He's not, he's not going to, he doesn't have a chance of winning that war. Even though you said Yehuda is very strong in the Medrash, but it says Yosef is even stronger to the extent that Yehuda said, Yosef is stronger than me. So what you heard of thinking? So what's the svara? You took charge over, over his Binyamin. And he's like, listen, I'm in charge of Binyamin. I'm willing to do whatever it takes. You could say, yeah, what do you mean? But there's so many Jewish kids. The rest of the kids, oh, everyone's good. Just one guy. So one kid, and the, one kid. Class for Shalom to say. But you could say, so one kid in the family is not so, I uh, okay, leave him. Okay, okay. So we lose one. Or you could say in a community. You know, this is a very... Um, in a community. So, so these kids aren't so good, so kick them out, who cares? Why should the community look bad? The rest of us are good. So who cares about that one kid, if two kids, three kids, they can just chuck them. We can let them, whatever happens, doesn't matter, but at least the rest of us are good. So what's, what's the lesson for us? What's the answer to this question? This is the lesson for every parent. Every father and mother, this is the, the accident we've got to realize. Hashem gave us the achrayos, the, the responsibility of every single one of our children. We have to give ourselves over with mysterious nefesh. Totally give ourselves over. Even, even for one child. That nothing that it shouldn't happen to a Jewish child should happen. We have to put ourselves over and it's... In, and, and it's not always so easy, you know, so never so watch this movie or do this thing, but we have to give ourselves over. So that doesn't happen to the, we have to, nefesh. Having serious nefesh to raise up a children with a chinuch, with an education of Kedusha and Tara on Tara Sekedosh, meaning, meaning in, in, a, in a pure way, it's a whole different discussion we should have. Magim, um, we can finish off like it says in the parsha. It became spread out and very, very wealthy and very, very good. Basically, what they were saying is that we have to have Mr. Snafesh for Chinuch Atar Sakedesh, Mr. Snafesh for our children. They should have a proper Jewish education, proper healthy education, and whatever it is, it's not just, it doesn't apply to just education, it applies to anything. Anything in a child's life, what's best for them in regards to their connection with Hashem. And we have to do whatever it takes. And sometimes it's hard situations. Sometimes it's, you know, it could be. It's like uh, where Hella said, there was a guy that he came to him and he said his son wants to play baseball. And he wants to join a, a, a monotonous league. And he didn't want to. He felt it was not good. And he asked him a few questions about the son's situation. And he said, no, he should. It's better for him to go. And that's when serious nefesh, because the guy didn't want to do it. And he could have said, no, I would have to stay in the system and I have to keep him in this little box. And he said in the end, this, you know, he came every keeper and he told, and the guy called him, the guy said, the guy said, that was the best thing I did for my son. Thank you so much. Because the son now has a new desire to dive in and learn. And serious nefesh, for your child's education and for your child's upbringing, that nothing bad should happen to them. It, it, it's being, it's not that a child can be become the perfect child the way I think they should be, but the way they should be for themselves. And it's having that commitment, and, 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 it's, and it's not easy. It's not always easy, you know, and every, every child comes with its challenges and when it's things you have to deal with. And if we give ourselves totally over, then we can have, like it says in the parasha, the success and become very successful. And a child be very happy and successful and wholesome. There's nothing better than a child having a wholesome upbringing and family. He feels loved, he feels cared for. And even when it comes to serious nefesh, like Yehuda, this is what we learned from the story of Yehuda. Yehuda is willing to give himself over, even though he, he, he's not going to be successful. He doesn't, doesn't think, there's no practical way that he can be successful, but he gives himself over. You could say it's like in times of Russia, 
that the Chassidim took the kids to underground yeshivas, they could learn, and a lot of the Rabbanim that we have today came and wanted these underground yeshivas. And this is what we're talking about. So this is the first lesson. To um, a lot more to be framed about. But yeah. Next, next point. We have some time. Let's go. Next point. Okay. Ois Gimel. Allah Pasuk on the Pasuk. Ves Yehuda Shalach. The game of the is on the Goshna. See, when finally, then in the Pasha, when Yaakov finds out the Yosef is still alive, is all excited, he sent Yehuda to build a place to learn Torah before he comes. And Yaakov says the 17 years of his life are the best 17 years. And what happened on his way before he gets there, he sends Yehuda to, to make a, a place, a base measures, a place to learn. And this is not a good lesson. It started Rashi, Bishem Medrash, Rashi brings down from the Medrash, Lasakin is lay by base Talmud, Shemisham Tetzah Ira. He made a place of learning, and then they could learn, and they have a Ira, they could learn how to, how to keep Torah Mitzvahs. Ukushetziv, Akash Baruch is Yaakov, Lared is Mitzrayim. When Yaakov, when Hashem commanded Yaakov to go to Mitzrayim, Yaakov was worried because of the fun of Tien Hashem Yeshiva. He worried to make sure there's yeshiva first. Even Hashem said, I'm going to be with you. I'm going to, I'm going to escort you. We'll be good. I'm going to go down with you. Hashem says, and I'll also come out with you. Nevertheless, he started Yaakov, he prepared, he, he, he organized himself to make yeshiva for him. And only then he went to Mitzrayim with, with Hashem. Because the Shiva is the foundation of the Jewish people. And, and I think this is a very fundamental point. Yeshiva, the, the purpose of Yeshiva is not to get gather information. It's a very important understanding. The, when, when the Friedrich Rebbe, when, when, the, when, he was, when he came to America and they'll sit him, and the, and the Tenchit Tzimim and Barchim were running during the Second World War, he always pushed, they should, they should try to learn. They should always constantly have a place to learn. They went to Shanghai, and they opened up the Yeshiva branch. And I, and I thought about it for a little bit. And it's so interesting. It's not like, go learn a Masechta. It's, it's not like they're trying to cover ground, trying to gain some like, a specific amount of knowledge. Hey, I, I learned this amount, that amount. It was that we're learning. We're learning the Torah. We're, we're going the ways of Chassidus, and they learned and, and learned Chassidus. You know, it's not like, and I, when I was in Yeshiva, it's, it's sort of like this idea that you, you think uh, it's like books. So this is like books. You, you want to go through the books and finish all these books. But the point was to be learning. The Yeshiva is the foundation of Judaism. That's what Judaism is alive today because of Yeshiva. It's, it's not the Yeshiva, it's because you learn a lot of Torah, which you do, but meaning quant quantity. It's about quality. It's about, it's about you'll be learning this idea, and, and you'll learn, you'll spend a year learning one, two ideas, listening to Gemara. And be even you learn delve, delve in depth. It's because you're learning Hashem's Torah. And this is sort of the Shiva we're talking about. We're not talking about just learning Shiva. So you go, you know, you go to college and you study to be a mathematician. You go to Shiva to get a diploma. It's not the it's not the one we're talking about. We're talking about Shiva is that it's the foundation of Torah and Yiddishkeit, and it's meant to shape the child that goes to the Shiva and meets Hashem in the proper path that he's Hanakha, the way he looks at the world and the way he interacts with the world and the way he lives his life is in a specific, special way. And, and his Avas Hashem and Yeros Hashem and his Kabbalah so and all these things, all these fundamental things, that's what we're meant to be getting in the Yeshiva. And that's sort of the idea. And that's what we're saying. That, that, that even Yaakov, even though he's going with Hashem and Hashem is promising, I'm going to be with you, we're going to take care of it. He still makes the Yeshiva. Yeshiva is the foundation of everything. It's like I was reading my son a nighttime book yesterday. It's about the, the Gemara. It's actually a very nice book. And it says, and it teaches about like the, the, how the Gemara formulated and how Allah comes about and stuff. One of the things says over there, when the printing press came, so they started printing like 44 years after the printing press was first established in 1440. Then 1484, they started printing Gemara. They got like 16 Mesechtas and then they stopped, weren't able to finish. And it was like a whole big Kiddush. Now you can have so much more printing. And so basically the Christian uh, priests, they understood that learning Gemara is, is what keeps Judaism alive. And 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 so destroying those and they it bothered them. So they tried to keep them destroying it. So what do they what do people, people didn't just learn they learned in the yeshivas? And and essentially what they were saying is that that throughout the history, trying to print the Gemara 
a lot of struggles, a lot of times the Gemara is being burnt and things like this because of the fact that the Gemara is, is they saw, they recognize the Gemara is, is the source for the continua, continuity of the Jewish people. And that's what they're ever saying. The yeshivas or keep, keeps the Jewish people going, even though Hashem can be with you. You need yeshivas. And, and, and so the yeshiva is not just the idea of yeshiva. We're going to talk about it. It's also about how we're sending our kids to yeshivas. Let's see. Uh, well, yeah, I guess we'll stop here and we'll continue tomorrow. So, Mr. Hashem, tomorrow to we continue, have a great day. And we should, we should uh, the, the, the lesson we have to think about from today's class in regards to Yehuda, Mr. Snapish that he had, you know, and Mr. could be standing up to the school and saying, hey, why are we teaching these things? This is not a proper thing to be taught for the Jewish, for the Jewish kids, you know, or, or or making sure your kid has a proper Jewish education. You know what I mean? And so many levels you think about it, but, but it's asking ourselves, are we choosing the either way out or having them serious nefesh? Even though it could be something that's not going to be even practically done. I'm still speaking up about it. Anyway, to have an amazing day, everybody. And uh, yeah, we'll see you tomorrow.